All right, this is question three from paper three, 2019. This question is about lenses. Figure 3.1 shows an object placed six centimeters in front of a converging lens. That's the same thing as a convex lens. It has a focal length of 12 centimeters. Okay, so those points marked F, those are 12 centimeters away from the lens. All right, so we're going to draw three rays in order to draw this ray diagram. Okay, so the first ray, I'm going to call ray one, is going to go from the top of the object parallel to the principal axis. Ray number two is going to go through the center of the lens and ray number three Okay, and all of these are from the top of the object. So, from object through the center. And ray number three is going to go from the top of the object through the focal point. And we're going to continue it all the way on the other side to the center of the lens as well. Sorry, to the lens. Okay, so let's look at these three rays. So ray number one, that'll be the red ray. Ray number two, that'll be orange. And ray number three, we'll make that green. Okay, so ray number one, let's draw that one from the top of the object, parallel to the principal axis, and then goes through the focal point forgot to write that but that's what happens okay ray number two goes from the top of the object through the center of curvature so that one's like that and finally ray number three is going to actually start from here from this focal point top of the object we might have straightened this one up a little bit and then to the center of the lens. So let's straighten that one up. And then that's going to continue parallel to the principal axis. All right, now that we have our three rays, we notice that none of them intersect, which is usually how we locate our image. So this means that this must be a virtual image. And in order to find its location, we need to trace the refracted rays back on the other side of the lens. So these blue lines that I'm going to draw are going to represent our broken lines that you would draw to locate your virtual image. So that's the first one drawn back from the ray number three, the green ray. Then I'm going to trace over Ray number one, the red one, it's going to land me right about there. And one more from our orange ray. Trace that back. Make sure it's straight and right about there. Okay. And then where they meet, that marks the spot for our image. So our image forms right about there. Okay. I for image. And that is our re diagram. So we want to hold on to this for a little bit because we're going to be asked some other questions. So whenever you draw a ray diagram, expect that you're going to be asked about the properties of the image. So let's just write them down on the side here. We use the acronym S-A-L-T to note the properties of an image formed by a lens or a mirror. The S stands for size. And that's compared to the object, so the size of this 
image is much, much bigger than the object. So we say that it is magnified. Another property of this image is its attitude, A for attitude, so that can either be upright or inverted. Upright means, you know, the top is, it means upright. <laughs> and inverted means upside down. So attitude is obviously not inverted. It's not upside down. It's right side up. So upright means right side up in our vernacular. So attitude is upright. Location is beyond the focal point, okay, or between the focal point and the center of curvature. So we can be a little more accurate. So between F and 2F, 2F is not shown on this graph, but it's fine. And then the type is obviously a virtual because it's not formed behind the lens, okay. Next part of the question asks us to calculate the magnification produced by the lens. So the relationship that we're looking for, the formula is magnification is equal to image distance divided by object distance, okay? And that is distance from the lens. So the distance of the image from the lens is roughly 12, we can say roughly 12 um, centimeters, it's a little beyond. So on your graph paper, you'll be able to see exactly how much, okay, but I'm gonna just say roughly 12. And the object distance was six. Okay, so 12 divided by six gives us a magnification of about two. All right, part three says state one property of the image formed apart from magnification. So from our salt, other than size, state two other properties, okay? So a safe bet is to state the attitude and the type, okay? Location can be a little tricky, especially if you did not, you know, draw everything completely accurately. So give the attitude, which is upright, and the type, which is virtual. Okay, hey, part B says the object is now moved so that it is 16 meters from the lens. State two ways in which the nature of the image, so by nature we're talking about these properties, size, attitude, location, type, um, size, attitude, and type more, not so much location, of the image changes from that obtained when the object was six centimeters in front of the lens, okay? So we can draw ourselves a little sketch if we want to recall what will happen. So in our little sketch, we'll have our lens. This time, the object will be behind the focal point. So the focal point was at 12 centimeters and the object would be at 16. So that's our object. And then other focal point would be over here, 12. So we'll have one ray going to the lens through the focal point. And we'll have another ray going through the focal point till we reach the lens and then going parallel. This is where our image will be formed. So clearly that will be an inverted image, okay? without um, some other information. You can't really tell the location or the size, but you can give the attitude and the type. You know that it is formed behind the lens, so that is a real image. And you can tell its attitude, it's gonna be inverted, upside down. Okay. Understand that inverted means upside down, but don't write upside down on the paper, write inverted. All right, part C, last part of this question. The object is then placed 12 centimeters from a convex lens of focal length, four centimeters, so we have a new focal length. Okay. 
Determine the image position using another method apart from the construction of a ray diagram. So do not draw a ray diagram. We're told to use this equation. This equation is known as the lens equation. This is not given to you in that list of formulas at the beginning, so you need to memorize this. It relates the focal length, that's the F, to the image distance, that's the V. At first glance, I know this formula looks a little scary, but there's a magic button on your calculator that's going to make this very, very simple. It's called the inverse button, and it will look something like this and x with a negative 1. You might have to press second function or shift to get to it, depending on your calculator. But once you know how to do that, I'm going to rewrite this formula um, with that symbol. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. The inverse of the focal length is equal to the inverse of the image distance plus the inverse of the object distance. So all you have to do now is substitute these values in. Okay, so our object distance is 12. We're told the object is placed 12 centimeters from a convex lens of focal length, 4 centimeters. Okay, so we want to find the image distance. Okay. So we're trying to find V. So first thing we need to do is rearrange our equation to make the image distance the subject. Don't be afraid of the inverse signs. It's just another number, another variable in the equation. It moves right along with the letters, okay? So this is a very simple, A, A equals B plus C. Same thing, okay? So in order to get rid of this U that's next to it, what we're going to do, this becomes image distance is equal to, once I take this U over to the other side, it's being added here. So when I take it to the other side, it's going to be subtracted from the focal length, from the inverse of the focal length. So that becomes inverse of the focal length minus the object distance, the inverse of the object distance to be specific. Okay, so this is like our starting point. We have our equation all sorted out, mostly. We can substitute now, okay, so we can put in our values. So we're going to say inverse of the image distance is equal to the focal length inverse of the focal length. We're told the focal length is 4, so we plug in the 4 plus inverse of our object distance, which we're told is 12. Okay, now inverse just means 1 over. Okay, so however you feel comfortable doing it, you can go and work out what is 1 over 4 on the side. 1 over 12 on the side, or you can just, on your calculator, press 4 and then the inverse button, and it'll give you the correct values. Okay, press 12, inverse sign, and you'll get the values. Okay, so I've already worked that part out, so I'm going to plug in what this sum is equal to, and it is equal to 0 0.33. But I'm not done. I need to find the image distance, not the inverse of the image distance. So in order to work that out, I need to do the opposite operation. I need to take this inverse over to the other side of the equation. And what that means is that I will take the inverse of what's on the other side of the equal sign. So this becomes image distance is equal to the inverse or 1 over 0 0.33, which gives me 3 centimeters. And that's my final answer. Okay? I know that's a lot for two points, <laughs> but it's very simple. Okay?
And that is the end of this question.